Learn how to store and load sensitive data and files on your local file storage. Therefore, you can store your sensitive data such as passwords and emails and so on securely and encrypted on your local phone, iOS or Android. If you're new here, subscribe to my channel and make sure to watch this video till the end. Let's get started by taking here this Flutter Secure Storage Package and this is an alternative to the Shared Preferences Package. Both packages store and load key value pairs on your local storage. However, the Flutter Secure Storage is also storing them securely and encrypted on your local file storage. We want to get started with a sample application to showcase the functionality of our secure storage package. Therefore, I have created here this UI with the save button and every time if we click on the save button, then we want to persist all of this data, the name, the birthday and also these pets. Therefore, let's start with our button. So if we click on this button, then we want to persist our username and therefore I create here a new user secure storage class. And here we call then this method set username where we put then our username inside. And therefore I take here this text editing controller which is then accessing the value of this text field and it puts then here the string inside. And now we want to go to this user secure storage class and here we want to create then a new instance of our Flutter secure storage. And to make use of this, you also need to go to your pub spec jaml file. And here you need to include this flutter secure storage under your dependencies. And secondly, you also need to go to your Android folder app build gradle. And here you need to set the min SDK version to 18 or higher. With the setup completed, we can go back to our user secure storage class. And here we create then first of all a key. And this key is later used to store then our username. And therefore we create here a method set username where we put then our username inside which is the value of this text field. And now we can make use of our Flutter secure storage to write our data locally and encrypted. Therefore we first of all put here the key inside which is here our username and we also need to put a value inside which is here our username value. So we put for the key username the value username inside. And secondly, we also want to create a method get username where we then call our storage again. And this time we want to read our data again. And therefore you need to access here over this key, the data, and then it will return the data which we have stored before inside. So in total, we have one method for writing our data to our local storage and the other one for reading our data from the local storage. And now we can use these both methods within our user page. So the first one we already used for storing our data every time if we click on our save button. And now we also want to load our data again. And this is what we do within our init state method. And here inside we access then our user secure storage and get here the username. Therefore we put here our name which we have loaded from our storage again to our text editing controller. And this text editing controller is then wired up with our name field. So here you see that we have put the controller name inside, which is then accessing here this text field. And now we can try it out. So I have put here in all of these fields some data and then I click on save. And now you can hot restart your application or you can also close it and restart your application. And then you should see that we have again our username inside because before we have saved our username and within our init state method, we load then again our username and put it to our text field. Next, we also want to look at how we can persist a list of data and therefore we have here a list of strings which is our pets and we want to persist it. So let's get started again with our save button. So every time if we click here, we want to persist this data and we can do this by simply calling here the set pets method and we put then the pets inside which is here this list of strings which is right now in our state. And like before, we go again to our user secure storage and here we create then another method set pets and we get then this time a list of strings which we need to persist. And therefore we can do the same thing as before. We can call here this write method and we put a key and a value inside 
However, as a value, you only can put a string inside. However, we have here a list of strings and therefore you need to convert your pets and also encode them. And if you encode them, this will then return here a string value. And now we can use again our write method to put our value inside. Therefore, we create first of all a key and therefore you create here another key at the top, which is different as the other key, which we already used. Otherwise, if you use here the same key, then you would overwrite your existing data. And lastly, you need to put this value inside of this write method. And with this, we also securely store our pets. And secondly, we also want to create a method get pets. And here inside, we basically call then this read method like before. And we use then here again the key pets, which we also have used for writing our pets. And this returns then here a value, which is of a type of string. And we need to convert the string again to a list of string. And therefore you can simply convert it again to a list of string. And you also put here this value inside. And the important thing is to also decode your value before you convert it back to a list of string. And right now he is also warning us here because the string can also be of a type of null. Therefore we also need to catch it. So if our value is null, then we want to return here null because he couldn't load any data from the storage. And if it is not null, then we can convert it back to our list of strings. And with this, we can now make use of these both methods. So first of all, we go back to our user page and then we also go to our init state method to load again our pets. And we want to put these pets then again inside of our state so that they are restored. And now we can try it out. So I select here some pets, then I click on save. And then you can restart your application and you will see that he has kept the same selection because within the init state, he has loaded again our pets from the local file storage. We also want to look at how we can persist a daytime object and therefore we want to persist here this birthday. And this is then here inside of our state, this daytime object, which is also nullable. And now we want to store this birthday every time if we click on the save button. And therefore we want to check first of all if our birthday is not null. And if it is existing, then we can actually create here a new method set birthday and we put then our birthday here inside. Like before, we go again back to our user secure storage and here we create then a new method set birthday. And here we get then this daytime object, which we need to convert first of all to a string. And therefore you have on your daytime object this to ISO string method, which is converting it here to a string value. Value. And now we can make use again of our storage.write method and also persist here our data. So we can put here this value string inside. And I also have created another key. So this is a different key than the other keys before. And lastly, we also can create this get birthday method where we actually load our data again. Therefore, I simply put here again the key inside, which we also have used before for writing our data. And this returns then here a string. And we need to convert the string again back to a daytime object. And how you can do this is by calling daytime try pass. And here inside you can then put the string value inside. And this converts then our string value again to a daytime object. And we also get here this error because this birthday can also be null. And therefore we also need to catch it. So if it is null, then we want to return here null as a daytime object. Otherwise we want to pass our birthday value. And now we can go back to our user page and here we go to our init state method and we load also our birthday again. And we also put this birthday then again inside of our state so that we restore it again. And now we can try it out. So I basically select here a value and then you see that we have a birthday inside. I click on save. And now if you hot restart, you see that also our birthday was loaded again from our local file storage. And by the way, if you want to get here this whole source code of this application, you can get it with the first link in the description. And with the second link, you can get access to my Flutter courses, where I teach you how you can become a better and more efficient developer. Hello everyone, thank you so much for watching this video. Please make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel here to get the latest news about Flutter. And see you soon, bye.